who's the Papu now? Honorable Speaker, sir, on behalf of my party, the All India Trinamool Congress, I rise to speak on the additional demand for grants 22-23. I begin by quoting the author Jonathan Swift. As the wildest writer has his readers, so the greatest liar has his believers. And it often happens that if a lie be believed for only one hour, it has done its work. Falsehood flies and truth comes limping after it. This government has us believe every February that this country's economy is going great guns. We are the fastest growing, most efficient global player. Everyone is getting employment. We're getting gas cylinders. We're getting electricity. We're getting pakka houses. This falsehood flies for about eight to 10 months and then the truth comes limping after it. And now we are in December and the government says it needs another 3.26 lakh crores of additional funds over and above the budget estimate. The government and the ruling party coined the term Papu. You use it to denigrate, to signify extreme in incompetence. Let me use the next few minutes to point out what the data, the statistics tell us as to who the actual Papu really is. NSO numbers were out yesterday. Industrial output has shrunk by 4% in October to a 26-month low. The manufacturing sector contracted 5.6%. Manufacturing is still the biggest generator of jobs. 17 of the industry sectors that make up the index of industrial production have recorded negative growth rates. Forex reserves have fallen by $72 billion in under a year. The Honorable Finance Minister yesterday during question hour mentioned how apparently 50% of FII inflows into emerging markets are coming into India. Wonderful! But her colleague, the Minister of State for External Affairs, just last Friday, in response to a question in this very house, stated that almost 2 lakh people, 1 lakh 83,741 people, renounced their Indian citizenship in the first 10 months of 2022. This exodus in 2022 takes the total number of Indians renouncing Indian citizenship under this government in the past nine years since 2014 to over 12 and a half lakh people. This year has already seen more people giving up Indian citizenship than any single given year. High net worth individuals are willing to pay up to a million dollars to get citizenship of Portugal, of St. Kitts, of Greece. Is this the sign of a healthy economic environment? of a healthy tax environment? Who's the Papu now? There is an atmosphere of terror in this country with the sword of the enforcement directorate hanging over businessmen and high net worth individuals. The ruling party buys lawmakers for hundreds of crores and yet members of the opposition represent 95% of lawmakers under investigation by the enforcement directorate. But forget politicians, they're tough. They can fend for themselves. Businessmen and high net worth individuals are soft targets. In the monsoon session, in response to a query from my honorable colleague from the JDU, Mr. Rajiv Ranjan Singh, the finance ministry informed this house that in the past 17 years, the ED has opened 5,422 investigations under the PMLA, but has convicted only 23 people. That is a conviction rate of a pathetic 0.5%. Since 2011, the ED has launched 1,600 investigations, 1,800 raids, and convicted only 10 people. In the supplementary demand for grants, I see that the government is asking for an additional 2,900 crores to buy land and ready-built accommodation, office accommodation for the enforcement directorate. The taxpayers, you and I, are paying for the ED's operations, for their prosecutions, for their investigations, for their foreign junkets. So do, do parliament and public representatives have no right to ask this Nakhaunga, Nakhane Dunga Sarkar who's presiding over the ED, why there is such a pathetic conviction rate of 0.5%? Is the ED's job only to harass people or is it to actually track down and uh, uh, catch the perpetrators of financial crimes? What is this level of incompetence? Who's the Papu now?